So let's talk about the Cronmed life cycle. Uh, go through the different stages of this insect. But first, just so that no one's confused, uh, because many people see Cronmeds buzzing around the lake and they think they're mosquitoes. Well, Cronomids are members of the Dipteran order of insects. They're two-winged insects, but they don't have a, the males don't have a, or females don't have a proboscis to bite. So they may look like a mosquito, but they're a non-biting midge is actually what they are. So Cronomids have a complete life cycle. Egg, larva, pupil, and adult. And the only other still water aquatic insect that has a complete life cycle like the chronomid are caddisflies. They have an egg, larva, caddis pupa, and the caddis adult. All the other insects have nymphal stages or an incomplete metamorphosis, an incomplete life cycle. So with so many species, basically sizes and colors of chronomids living in lakes, they can live in five feet of water, they can be living in 50 feet of water, and they could be living in 100 feet of water. So the, the way their life cycle begins, the chronomid larvae live in the bottom of the lake, in the benthic matter, in the silt, in the marl, in the mud. And the chronomid larvae are worm-like, segmented, and they have little tiny prolegs at the front end and at the posterior end, their tip of their abdomen. But they live in tubes. They typically build a little tube out of silt or vegetation and they embed themselves in the bottom substrate of the lake. So that means they could be living, the chronomid larvae could be living in, the, in tubes at the bottom of the lake in five feet, 50 feet, in 90 feet of water, okay? The majority of chronomid larval are maroon or red in color, but they're also shades of green and brown. And the reason why you see a lot of maroon or blood red colored chronomid larvae, it's because they have a hemoglobin-like substance in their circulatory system that allows them to live in almost anoxic or extremely oxygen poor water. That's why they can survive in depths of beyond 50 feet, you know, 90 feet, 100 feet. So if you were to take a little sampling uh, tool called an Ekman dredge, which samples about a six inch cube of the bottom substrate. Say you were anchored in 30 feet of water and you lowered that uh, over the side of the boat and then pulled up a cube, a six inch cube of mud and then sifted it through a kitchen strainer, you would in, in a productive lake like the lake we're on today, uh, you, you, would, you would sample five, six hundred, maybe more chronomid larvae in that six inch cube of mud. So there, that's why we, when we get a hatch, there's such a prolific number of chronomid pupa that are emerging. So these chronomid larvae are living in the bottom benthic areas of the lake and again, they could be a one-year life cycle in the larval stage. They could be three or four months in the larval stage, or they could live for two years in the larval stage before that larva seals its tube up and transforms from the larval stage to the pupa stage in that tube at the bottom of the lake. It typically takes 10 to 14 days for that transformation to occur. And then once completed, that fully formed chronomid pupa will break out of that old larval case and then begin a slow ascent vertical straight up to the surface of the lake. And that, so if, if this pupa, if there's a pupa hatch occurring in 30 feet of water, it might take those pupa a couple minutes to finally get to the surface of the lake. And to help those pupa get to the surface of the lake, they build up body gases under the cuticle or the exterior uh, shell casing of the pupil. 
and that's why pupa become very mirror-like or shiny in appearance and that's that trapped gas that's helping the pupa rise more quickly to the surface of the lake. And once that pupa gets to the surface of the lake, a split forms on the back of its thorax and the adult chronomid wiggles out, sits on the water momentarily, and then flies off to shore to complete uh, mating. So usually within 24 hours of hatching, uh, the females will return to the lake uh, with fertilized eggs and uh, they'll hover or skim across the surface of the lake, dip the tip of their abdomen into the surface film and release those eggs. And those eggs are demersal. They'll sink to the bottom of the lake in five feet, 50 feet, 100 feet of water. And then that completes the life cycle and the next generation starts with those eggs that are gonna hatch, eventually settle down into the bottom benthic material, hatch into a new chronomid larva. So when you're on shore and you see these clouds of chronomids, they'll form big balls of adult chronomids. What you're seeing is a mating swarm of male chronomids and the, they release pheromones or sex hormones and the females pick up the scent and they fly into that swarm of males and the, f the eggs are fertilized on the females. They leave the swarm and then they go to the lake to release their eggs. So that's the life cycle. But what's interesting about coronamid pupa, when, they're, when they first come out of that old larval case and they'll suspend at the bottom of the lake, head up, tip down, abdomen down, and they may suspend for five to six, seven days before making that emergence vertical migration. And they do that suspension because they're not quite fully developed uh, uh, and they need to be completely transformed before they make that ascent because they can't get halfway up and then decide to go back down. Once they make the ascent, initiate the ascent, they're committed. So this is an important uh, point because that's why you can have incredibly good chronomid pupil fishing and never see an adult on the water or a spent pupil shock on the water. It's because those pupa are staging a foot off the bottom, 18 inches off the bottom, hundreds of thousands of them, and they're just wiggling head up, tail down, and waiting to fully mature before they make that ascent. So key takeaway points on this talk is that chronomids can emerge in five feet, shallow water, 10, 15, 20, all the way up to 100 feet. And uh, you see evidence of chronomid hatches by the shucks on the water or the adults. And uh, that's, that's the key point that uh, you know that there's some chronomids hatching. You'll see swallows, gulls, nighthawks uh, feeding on, on the adults, picking them off the surface as well. So Mother Nature gives us clues on how to determine whether there's a chronomid hatch. But now you understand the, hat, the, the life cycle and you understand why fish are feeding on those helpless pupa and often feeding on them very close to the bottom because that's where they're most concentrated before they make the emergent swim. And also it's a lot safer for the fish to feed deeper in the, in the water column than higher in the water column where they may expose themselves to predators such as ospreys and loons. So when do chronomids hatch? Well, they literally can hatch from mere days after an ice comes off the lake, almost to the day uh, that the ice returns to the lake if you're fishing a lake in the Northern Hemisphere that does freeze over. But ideally, chronomids in still waters, there's some key temperature ranges that you're gonna see the start of and then the most prolific hatches. 
So once you see water temperatures, surface water temperatures, get above about 48 degrees Fahrenheit, and then prime, time, prime temperatures around 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius, all the way up to 65, 70, 65, 67 degrees Fahrenheit, you're gonna have heavy emergencies. So chronomen hatches start in the spring, early spring, they build during the spring months, and they typically thin out during, uh, by the time you get into midsummer months and really warm water temperatures. And then you can have fall hatches because remember we have multi-generations on some species, more than one hatch during the year. So the fall period, right up until freeze up, uh, you can have uh, small, smaller size chronomids coming off. And of course, there's always gonna be lakes, depending on where you're located, uh, that you may get chronomid hatches all season long. But typically, uh, in like the Western states, uh, Washington, Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, and then certainly in BC, in the interior regions of BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, their spring hatches, so generally late April through to the end of June and a little bit into July. But again, everything is driven by water temperature in the lakes. So if it's a late ice off, then the water's gonna take longer to warm up. So those hatches are gonna be a little bit more delayed. Water temperature drives everything in lakes. Hatches, the, the development of nymphs, the development of the pupa, the uh, metamorphosis from the larval to the pupa stage, all driven by water temperature. So colder springs, later hatches, warmer springs, earlier ice off, the hatches will start sooner. But just to remember that chronomid or midge hatches are typically more abundant in the spring to early summer months.